Hey, how you doing? Uh, you find me in the beautiful Club Brighton site, and here I am in a motorhome, ready to go. Why? Well, because for various reasons with which you will be acquainted, this is how we're going to be doing Club Week this week. Your forums are going to be taking place through this medium, and I'm going to be speaking to some of my favourite people from the club and beyond. So if you're ready, let's get going. Welcome to Club Week. Karen, it's lovely to see you. Thank you, Matt. Likewise, it's very lovely to see you sitting in a camper van, I think. I am in a camper van. It's not my camper van. It's more spacious and well appointed than mine. But I'm not complaining. It's all right. Have you managed to get away in yours at all this year? Uh, well, yes. I, I would have liked to have done this interview in our car. We've got a caravan right at the moment, but we keep it in storage. And we don't have Wi-Fi there. So, yes, we've been away twice. We went away the very first day that the Caravan and Motorhome Club sites reopened after lockdown, which was July the 4th. And we were like, hey, off. So excited. We went down to Gatwick for a night. I know it's random, that. There's a, there is a long story, but it's, it, it's a long way from home to go. We were going to Brighton, but it's a long journey. So we... We sort of stop sometimes on the way and then we can get up at leisure and we're not arriving late to choose a pitch, you know. Um, so, but it's Gatwick. It was really strange because there was no flights. No flights. I, I'm was, not being... Well, the, the skies are empty. I don't, want to, I don't want to appear rude or stupid here, but if you're at Gatwick, you're nearly at Brighton. I know. You're nearly there. I know, but the thing is, it takes about six hours to drive from Yorkshire down there. Right. And by the time you get there, you might be one of the last people to arrive and then you don't have a, many choices of pitch. So we just chill out and cruise down the next day. And you're calm and you're rested. Because the thing is, I've noticed about travellers, we used to work in, in the holiday industry with caravan people coming to the static caravans. And they feel have a long journey. And it was usually the... It was usually the women, I think, but they were really cross because it was everybody was, you know, they had a journey and they were tired and everything. Um, so I like to just arrive at my destination after oh. a good night's sleep somewhere else if it's been a long journey. So right. that's it. And then we went up to Blenheim Palace. Well, it's our site's called Blade and Chains, which is fantastic for our location. You can walk 20 minutes, you can walk to Woodstock and to the palace. Wow. And you can get on a bus outside to go into Oxford and the Cotswolds is on the doorstep. So that was our first trip. Was it weird at all? You know, that bit where it felt like we were venturing into the world again, didn't it? For the first time. And you're, you're there on the site and you're thinking, I don't know, were you thinking, am I doing everything right? I, myself yes. at risk, others at risk. What what was it like in those first couple of days? Well, I, I, I'd, I'd obviously been keeping up to speed with what the club was saying about measures they're taken to put um, everybody in a COVID secure situation anyway. So I sort of knew the ropes and knew that the club would not, they're not going to open up unless they've done all the research, got it all sorted. Yes, it was a bit nerve wracking. It was very exciting. In our little home here, we did take the lockdown very seriously. And um, because we're knocking on a bit, John and me, you see, we're getting into that vulnerable category, so the, the say so. Um, but anyway, we, we not found- far behind you. Yeah. The experience was brilliant. You've got your own bubble, haven't you? Because you've got your emplacement. I didn't have a problem with it at all. Uh, talk to me about a big little, the Big Little Tea Time Festival. I mean, if there was ever a festival which had your name on it, that, that, that was it. That, that was, was it. Yeah, I, I think it was a great. <laughs> well, it was a great initiative. It was springtime, and we were locked down. Then we had the festival. It was mooted so that people that loved caravan motorhome camping could have a virtual, like Barbie or tea time and the idea was that you sat yourself up in your unit on your drive so you're safe in your own and we, we had a little play at it and I did some videos um suggestions perhaps about the, the types of food that we might normally like to cook 
um, when we're away from home. Because in those early days, it was all about making people feel like there was a sense of normality. Community, community normality, looking to the future. And it was just a way, really, of getting everybody out into their caravans or motorhomes in the drive. A lot of people love doing that anyway. I do know this Um, because it's like a sanctuary. You know, get out of the house where we've been confined to barracks and just have a game of cards, um, have your tea, have a drink. It was it was fab. But we set a tent up in the back garden. We've got a little two man igloo tent up for the video. And we, we had a great time. We, we set that up because originally I just was asked to do one video, but I enjoyed it so much doing it for the club. Um, and it gave me something to focus on as well. That I did one sort of every week to accompany each Wednesday when we got the bunting out. It was just a feel good factor for people, and so many people joined into it. You know, you and John, you're you're generous spirits, you know, and you you do a lot and you give a lot. And and but what were you getting from that at that time? Were you also feeling lonely, isolated? You know, what difference did it make to you? It gave me, as an individual, it gave me something to think about outside of, 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 of having no work particularly to do. Everything, you know, it, everything was closed for us. Um, so when I was invited to join the festival and do the recipes and think about what people might like to see, it gave me the biggest boost because I've got something to really get the spit and polish on, get myself ready. And yeah, it was just a massive lift. And then when I, you know, I'm not used to seeing this. I could see myself on the YouTube thing. So it was from a personal point of view, it was very satisfying. And it gave me more confidence as well. That's something else it did. Because I'd never done any videos face to face like that. I started doing some just for, for the fun. So every time I made dinner, I did a little video of it. Poor John could never sit down with his knife and fork because <laughs> that's always, always seriously. So it was it was great. It was great to be part of the community and to see people having such a good and how they were feeding back as well, you know. Um, and it just gave you a taste of the things to come, which did eventually, of course, in July when we could get back out again. I've been following you on Instagram right the way through the summer. And <clears throat> it just seems to me your outdoor life, you, you've got it nailed. You, you, you know exactly how to use a summer and get everything possible out of a summer. Your outdoor cooking is, is staggering. Yes. Really. Well, last two weeks ago, thank you, Matt. Two weeks ago, we got the caravan back out. We were supposed to be going. I've got, I've got the brochure here. <laughs> we, we'd got um yeah we'd got a two week trip booked in June originally to go to Brittany and the club booked it all for us like they do and of course that was cancelled and then when France opened up again we reinstated the holiday we're coming to Brittany and then it had to be cancelled because we were put back into the quarantine corridor that's when we said well let's go somewhere we'll have another staycation so coming back to you in a minute about the cooking and everything so we got hitched up. Oh, it's only three weeks ago, and we did a. Th we were to Malvern because it, all the club sites were really busy, which were marvellous. So we thought, where can we go? Have you been to Malvern? I bet you have. The no, Malvern Hills. That one, no, no. In, in Worcestershire. Oh, cracking. Beautiful, beautiful pitch in lovely location, looking at the hills um, above. We, my, I invited Terry from the Bake Off to join us in his motorhome. So he came trundling along for a few nights. So we decided to have a bit of a stab at cooking something related to the local area um, and see if we could do it in our, well, we used his oven in, in his little tiny motorhome in the end. But there was a guy and it turned out he was 82 on the next emplacement to Terry and he'd lost his wife a couple of years ago. And he was saying, I still come on my own because it's a lonely life if you don't make the effort. And I thought that sort of encapsulated really 
what I like about, I've always done this style of holiday ever since being a child. When you think, what is it I like about it? There's there's a hundred thousand things. People see you struggling with something, whether you're trying to put your awning up and you've forgotten to fetch your mallet and that. And then somebody, of course, spots you and they come and offer help. And that is, it's a really amazing community. What I like about it as well is that you, you have the holiday on your terms. Exactly. It's like if you just want to stay in your bubble with your partner, family, whatever it is, in your space, no one's going to bother you. But if you want to reach out and share something or meet somebody, you can do that too. Whereas yeah. other, like in a hotel, you're forced, aren't you? You're forced one or the other. And that's not what we're about. We're about setting our own terms and doing it our own way. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, you know, I don't, one of the things I don't like getting dressed up. I mean, I know I do get dressed up, but on holiday, the regimented thing about getting dressed for dinner and going down to the hotel at a certain time drives me mental. So I like to just relax. But you're quite right. When people don't understand why I like this, I sort of say exactly what you said. When you go, I can use, I can do a bit of work, but I can work inside the caravan. I can use it for whatever purpose I want. You can be isolated, you can be outgoing, you can chill out, you can have a game. There's so many aspects. And I've, I like, I've been doing the Zooming this in there. You know, there's no real reason why you can't actually expand your life and take it around. And that's, that's what I like to do. It's not time to go yet, is it? Have we finished? It, it, we've got to go. We've got, somebody else wants this pitch. I've got to get off. <gasps> I've got to go and empty. Yeah, it's that time. <laughs> I've got to go and empty my waste tank. It's. <laughs> oh, it's oh Matt, you have fun. I do. I do miss meeting you and like being face to face and seeing John and doing it properly. I hope that's not too far away. You know, Karen. No. We can do this thing, and who knows? Maybe I'll see you on a site at some point soon. It, well, you know, strange things have happened. This is this is this is so funny when you do go around sites. You know, uh, you never know what's going to be around the next corner. So yeah, that'd be brilliant. All right. You Thank take you care so much, Matt. Give my yeah. love, to John. You take care. I shall. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Matt. Bye.